Ah, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy Joey Does Tech, and welcome yourselves back to a brand new video. Light keeps changing, man. Today we have a very, very special video. I, well, to be honest, I don't know if it's gonna be too special in the way that I fix it or I don't. I've no idea what to expect. I've no idea what the actual fault is on the console, but man, am I ready to try and crush this challenge. First of all, a huge shout out to Phil over at the YouTube channel, The Coder. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description box down below. Please make sure to check it out if you haven't already. Phil was an exceptional console repair technician. I don't actually know if console repairs is all he does, but I think it's the majority of what he does on his YouTube channel. He's amassed over 26,000 YouTube subscribers and he is constantly supporting the smaller community of repair technicians on YouTube, such as myself. He has sent me an original Xbox One. I believe this Xbox One came from one of Phil's viewers. And to that viewer, I also say a huge thank you. I believe the viewer themselves has sent Phil a couple of Xbox Ones. And Phil was kind enough to say, Joey, do you want one of these Xboxes to try and fix and have like a bit of a challenge? And I said, you're damn right. I didn't really, I just kind of said, yes, mate, that would be absolutely wicked. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So Phil has an Xbox One, I have an Xbox One, and hopefully we can both fix the Xbox Ones. But my troubleshooting goes as far as, does the Xbox turn on? If not, change hard drive. Does Xbox now turn on? Yes, fixed. So I'm kind of hoping we have something a bit more complex than that. I'm not a fully competent repair technician. I am still in the massive process of learning and that is what my channel is about. So I'm gonna cut the jibber jabber and we're gonna take this Xbox One over to the desk and diagnose first off why it's not working. If you enjoyed this video guys, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And again, Phil, a huge thank you to you for sending me this Xbox One. Now let's try and fix it. Apologies if you can hear my sniffly nose and croaky voice. I seem to be a tad under the weather. So I have my honey, lemon and ginger drink with a little bit cinnamon in. Lovely. Don't worry, it's not COVID. I've tested for it. All right, Xbox looks in fairly good condition, actually, to be honest. There's not many scratch marks. There's a little bit of dust. We have the warranty sticker removed from the console as well, but, oh, okay, the HDMI port. What's going on here, then? It's like a bit of white surrounding it. Is that what it's meant to... Does that area of the HDMI port look like that? I'm just referring to another model that I have, and this one isn't nowhere near as bad. I mean, it's 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 got white scratch marks around it, but... I feel like this one has had a lot of uh, a lot of tussle with whoever's tried to put the HDMI in. What I will say is that the pins on the HDMI itself look fine. I've not tried to turn it on yet, so this is just me kind of guessing that it might be a display issue. But other than that, the Xbox itself, even though the warranty sticker is missing, it looks like it's in pretty good condition. Let's see what happens when we try to turn it on and feed it a disc. All right, I've just put the power in. Let's see if the Xbox actually turns on first of all. No. So I've just put that power cable in, which is a known good power supply, by the way. That power supply hasn't even turned onto the white light, so it's just stayed orange. And uh, I'm trying to put the Xbox on, and it's not having it. So let's take it apart. First things first, we pop the hood, and we remove the sync button. We take this part, push down, separate, flip it over, keep that pushed, take prying tool, clip one, clip two, through. Put it on its back so we can take off the front ribbon cable. To do this should be pretty simple. Every time I've said that, it's not been. Lift the cable up as such. Put the prime tool in the latch and push. And now you can move the top of the Xbox case away from the body of the Xbox. I like to use a T9, but I think these are T10 screws, but the T9 fits both this and the screws that you need for the Wi-Fi board as well. The Wi-Fi board is missing a screw here. I'm just gonna put the power cable in again and see if I can hear maybe like any, any startup or anything. So the fan doesn't even get any power, you see that? So when I put the power block in, the fan will usually spin if the device is receiving any power, I think, anyway. This is all guesstimating, by the way, guys. I have no idea what I'm doing. Take the power back out. I'm gonna get the board out, last but not least. Use our X-clamp tool to take off the fan. All right, a little bit of dust, but nothing horrendous at all. All right, so I'm just having to look on the face of it first off, like a visual inspection, and although it's a little bit dusty, I can't really see anything that 
jumps out at me as such, especially down the power rail side of things. So I recently learned after doing my video from last Saturday and doing a stream the day after on the Sunday, that this is obviously the power rail and these are MOSFETs. You've got two, you've got a tiny MOSFET here and then you've got the bigger MOSFET here. But I don't know whether to measure those first or check the actual voltage rail. I have a voltage diagram for the Xbox One, so I'm unsure on what to do first. But before I think about doing anything like that, I think I just need to give it a dust, not necessarily a clean with IPA, but just a quick dusting because there's quite a lot of stuff in the ports and I feel like this board just needs a little bit of TLC before we have a look. The only thing that I've just noticed actually is that this coil doesn't seem to be sat right. You see how it like goes over the line? I don't think that's gonna really affect anything, but it's definitely something that we'll check. So I'm gonna take this outside real quick and just give it a real quick dusting. Now that the cleaning is done, let's check over. First thing I'm gonna do is definitely check over the MOSFETs. I don't know why it's screaming out to me, but I feel like that's the right thing to do. Could be completely wrong. I'll get the microscope out, and I believe we measure these in diode mode with no power running to the board. You put red probe on ground, and then you put the black probe on the single trace going to the MOSFET, which is called the gate. Could be wrong. The reading we're looking for is 0.6, and we have that with this MOSFET, we have 0 0.6. 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So all the MOSFETs on the power rail along here are reading 0 0.6, which I believe is what they should be reading. Might be weird to some, but I'm gonna just check the coils around where the power comes in. That seems to be fine. Move to the next one down. That seems to be fine. Next one down. That also seems to be fine. So now that I've tested the power rail down the side here, there's one other MOSFET. So I've got the multimeter in diode mode, red probe on ground. Now I just want to check this gate here, and it should be 1.9. Yeah, we get 1.904 volts, which is good. That's what you want to see. I've now just plugged the Xbox power in, and I'm just going to check the standby voltages on the Xbox One. So we go to voltage mode. It's going to be black probe on ground. I think the best place to start is actually down on this area of the board. Around here is the 3.3 volt power line. On the eject, I should be getting 3.3 volts, but I'm not getting that. I don't know if that's because it's in standby, but I thought this graph showed in standby. Okay, so we move over to, it's just, it's noted as cold. So that goes 3.3 volts, and then power should also have 3.3 volts. And we get 93, is that millivolts? Is that what, is that, I think that's what it's called, millivolts, MV? 100 millivolts, which isn't what it should be. So we're not getting the right amount of power to the power, and we're not getting the right amount of power to the eject button either, that's 79 millivolts. If I go north a little bit, there's two more little test points here. We've got CLK and data, so data comes out at 3.3 exactly, and CLK comes out at 3.3 exactly as well. A lot of the stuff that I've been researching, I haven't found that many articles on the original Xbox One. A lot of the articles are on the Xbox One S or the Xbox One X, etc. People are saying though, if you have an Xbox One and the power doesn't work, and all of the MOSFETs down the side of the power rail are fine, it can also indicate to a south bridge issue which is this big chip here i believe it's the second biggest chip on the board itself i hope not because i tried to remove one of these the other day on stream and it was very very difficult well i didn't try to remove it i just tried to reflow it and that was a pain as it was i hope that's not the case so on this board you have a five volt line as well i think that's what would stop I'd see, I don't know if that's what's gonna stop the Xbox turning on or not. But the fact I'm not getting what I need to get down here is concerning. So this is still meant to be the 3.3 volt line. So I test here, 3.3, test here, 3.3. So I know that around this area is also good. 3.3 there as well, that's good. I'll just slowly work my way up the board. What about the disk drive connector? That gets 3.3. The second pin in is meant to be shown as 3.3 volts as well, but that's coming up as four millivolts and then this next to it as well is also that's meant to be showing 3.3 volts but that's coming up as 006 millivolts supposedly up here as well there's more 3.3 voltages so we need to go up here see that's shown as 3.3 which is just above the i believe that's is that sata so let me just divert my attention to the 5 volt line logically in my head if power is coming in here then the closest voltage bit near the power is where i should start so there is a component missing here but it's it's shown as 3.3 where it needs to show 3.3 that's on all the other boards that i've worked on as well for some reason there's a component missing here there's meant to be a 5 so we're meant to have a five volt here. 
Oh, okay, so that's shooting all around the place. You see that? That's a 1.2. That's a 1.2 volt. And we're meant to have a, f this is meant to be a five volt line, this one. But it's coming up as 1.2. Let me just confirm with you guys where that is on the board. So we've got the power in here. And this is what is meant to be five volts but it's coming up as 1.2, this exact area here. Could it be that we need to replace this then? Let's see if I get five volts anywhere else on the board. I'm, I'm meant to have five volts here, which I don't, I get 40 millivolts. I'm meant to have five volts on the other side of that as well, which I don't, I have, it's jumping all over the place, 27 millivolts. I'm meant to have five volts here, which I don't, and I'm meant to have five volts here, and I have 18 millivolts, so I don't have that there either. So maybe the issue that we have is with the five volt line. So if I go to the other side of the board now, I'm meant to have five volts here on this test point. And I do have five volts, I have 5.1 volts. What about up here? No. Along this rail here, these are all meant to be five volts, but I'm not getting five volts on any of them, actually. What about if I, do I get five volts on here? Nope. I'm also meant to get five volts around this area as well, but I don't. And on these two test points here, I should be getting five volts. I get 5.1 on that one, and I get 5.1 on that one. This is tough, man, because there's uh, <laughs> there's quite a few discrepancies now. It's not, so we have, we had, to start with, we had the power down here not displaying a 3.3, so that, that should be 3.3 here, but it's not. That's a 50 millivolts. Then up here, we're meant to have five volts, but we don't have five volts, we have, 1.4 volts, 1.5, 1.3, but it's meant to be five volts. Could that just mean that Southbridge is gone? At this point, I've now scoured the internet for videos and uh, <laughs> I can't find anything else to check. In my brain on paper, I can check the voltage rails and I can obviously show that certain things aren't adding up, but my brain limits what I do next because I don't have that experience to go, oh, well, this is three point, this isn't showing 3.3 volts because of X, Y, Z, or this isn't showing five volts because of this equals that. And you know, that's, that's the experience part of this, which makes it difficult. And just, I guess, understanding basic electronics as well would, would give me a massive boost in this area. But I also know that it is quite tough without board schematics to know exactly what goes where. I've also just scoured the board to find a component that doesn't seem to be on it. However, I have also just verified that it doesn't need to be there. So I was looking at this area. It looks like there's meant to be some sort of like IC here. And in all the pictures of boards that I'm looking at, there seems to be one. But I've just gone on to iFixit's website. And funny enough, the legend that is Tronics Fix actually said that you don't need this on here. It was removed in later revisions because it wasn't considered important enough. Interesting. The search continues. So at this point, I had to admit that I was stuck. I knew that something wasn't right on the board because the voltage didn't add up to what it was meant to add up to. After endlessly searching for stuff online, I realized I only had one option. And that only option was to phone a Phil. Well, message him, but phone a Phil sounds better. Phil said, do you have a power supply? I said, yes, I do. The leads are broke, but I found some other ones that fit it. I'm gonna inject one volt into the area where there should be five volts. And I'm hoping that something might happen. I might gradually increase it, but then again, I also don't wanna cause any more damage to the board than what there already is. Let's do this. I'm not gonna bore you with the hours worth of time that I've spent chasing voltages around this board. I will briefly summarize where I'm up to though. This over here is the power connector for the disk drive. Next to it, there is a small component that's meant to be receiving 3.3 volts. It's not. There's a MOSFET over here. I've checked that and I've checked all the MOSFETs on the board. And from a MOSFET standpoint, everything seems to be fine. Probably comfortably say I've been around every single capacitor in continuity mode on this board now. I then got my donor board out and thought I'm gonna start from basics and I'm gonna go right to the source of where the power comes in. So we obviously have 12 volts coming in, right? So I go back to this board and I check for the 12 volts. The first place I check to make sure that 12 volts is coming in was on these coils here. And lo and behold, on the faulty board, which is this one, I didn't have 12 volts, but I've got 5.5 and I've got 3.3 and I've got 1.8 dotted around the board, but I just don't have 12 volts. So I tried looking online to see if there was anywhere that said where the 12 volt line was like to follow and I couldn't find anything. So this is what I found. This is my donor board. This is a good working board. It's just very, very grimy and has a lot of damage everywhere, but somehow still works. I'm not necessarily comfortable to sell this one to somebody. That's why I keep it as my donor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my multimeter to DC voltage. I'm gonna turn the board over and I'm gonna plug the power in. I'm gonna to go to pin six. Pin six on the back of the power supply, 
12 volts. And then also I believe number eight is 12 volts, okay? So I'm gonna unplug this. This is the bad board, I'm gonna do the exact same. Turn on its back, I'm gonna plug the power supply in, black on ground to number six, and we get 240 millivolts. And it's just all over the place. And if I go to number eight as well, nothing. However, if I go to number 10, I get a five volt line. So it's literally the 12 volt, which I think is on number six, it's just not present, it's just not there. So that got me thinking, I've got a good like power supply because again, I know it works on other Xboxes, but the 12 volt is just not being picked up or something is causing it to instantly short and it doesn't even turn on the Xbox. So from that, I ended up putting the meter into continuity mode and once I put it into continuity mode, I was just following that pin six all the way around the back of the board, looking for shorts and possible faults and I couldn't find anything. Undoubtedly, somebody with better electronic repair knowledge probably would have been able to find something. On the other board, the power will come in and you'll have 12 volts on this coil, this coil, this coil, and even this capacitor here, you'll have 12 volts. I get nothing, I get nothing on this first coil at all. So whatever is causing it is literally killing it straight away. I've also tried injecting voltage into what I was talking about earlier, this 3.3 volt line here, but I've tried the Audi test and there doesn't seem to be anything getting hot even remotely. I started with one volt and I just worked my way up. Something to note as well, there is also a resistor here. On this board, it doesn't carry the 12 volts. So the 12 volts just isn't going anywhere on the board at all. I've been on this for hours now. So that then got me thinking, if I put the multimeter into continuity mode and then I go to pin number six, which is on the back of this board, because I thought it could be a loose connector, right? So I'm on pin six and then I take the red probe and I get continuity from inside the connector. So what's weird is that the port is connected to the pin on the back with the solder part. So I'm thinking we have a short to the 12 volt line. And again, I followed this pin to so many different places on the back and I just can't locate what might be causing the short. I think I've done enough to prove it's probably not gonna be a dodgy, a dodgy port if I get continuity in between here and the pin on the back. I think that's enough to write that off. The irony of this thing is, Phil's board looked 10 times worse. Like, he didn't even have a front panel. <laughs> He was being a true gent and he even gave me the Xbox that looked better. Alas, it matters what's on the inside. It's now next day and I cannot find a short on the board and I've also tried the IPA method. I've sprayed the whole board, injecting different voltages all the way from one volt up to five volts to see if there is anything that is getting hot and I just can't find anything. We still have the exact same issues that we had at the start. I've learned so much doing this, like it's so much more beneficial for me to receive a board like this, which I don't know why it's not working. And I can test all these things and learn different things. That benefits me massively. So I really, really appreciate the opportunity that the coder, aka Phil, has given me today. I'm sorry it wasn't a fix. I'm due one soon. I'm definitely due a fix soon. But nonetheless, if you know what could potentially be wrong with this board, please suggest it in the comment section down below and I will come back to this 150%. If anyone knows of a certain component, which is a, a common fault as to why the Xbox just doesn't turn on and why there is no 12 volt detection on pin number six, which makes no sense to me. Saying that, I have given the board a good clean now with IPA. I know that's not gonna make a difference but you know what sometimes it can make all the difference let's just plug it in one last time to see what happens if anything nothing <laughs> this is a sore defeat but a great learning opportunity a massive thank you to those who watched today and a big welcome to anyone who is potentially new to this channel huge thank you to phil for sending me over the xbox one and i'm sorry my dude that i wasn't able to fix it like i said previous if anyone does have an idea of what might be wrong with the console please let me know in the comment section down below and if you hear from phil's video as well make sure you comment that down below as well so i can say hello to your faces i might potentially live stream tomorrow if we can manage to find a potential fix for this xbox one thank you guys so much for watching hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and make sure you hit that ding dong bell so you receive notifications as to when i upload a video or go live on the channel have a great rest of your weekend again thanks phil and i We'll see you all in the next one. Peace.